we just uh, jam around that A, I guess? Yeah, we just... Watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm joined by a special guest today. We've got Eddie here, Haddad. Haddad, I got, you his got last it on the name first right. time. Wow. I did it. There's because uh, no you've ever got done that. you got some nice hard consonants out there for me it's to true. jump yeah. onto. Like, all these last names with all these vowels. I don't know what to do with vowels. Yeah, they're confusing. <laughs> That's why it's like my, my, mine is the most simple and stripped down yet confusing last name because people like as far as they don't know if there needs to be an inflection or anything. It's literally just had dad. Had dad. Had dad. There you go. It's easy. So why don't you uh, tell everyone about yourself? We're, we're, he's going to show me some stuff. He's going to help me try to get better at guitar. Uh, if you've been watching this channel, you know that I've already done this with uh, Mike Ruggirello, someone with a harder last name. Uh, but I came up with the concept talking to this guy. We were hanging out at, uh, at Sean Pierce Johnson's Christmas special. Good and he started playing riffs. I was like, okay, you got to slow down and show that to me right now. <laughs> I was like, you got to come over sometime and like show me how to play stuff. <laughs> it's very flattering. Very flattering. So originally came up with the idea to do these lessons on the channel with Eddie. But then Mike came along. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it with, with Mike too. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there's, just, like I, there's too much to learn, man. So the, the, Do you feel like I married. cheated on you with Mike? You know, I mean, I'm finding it. In my heart to forgive you. It's gonna be a long road, you know. But uh... it's starting to feel like a like a Christian like save the marriage movie over here. <laughs> I mean, those always end well, anyways, typically. So and wonderful soundtracks on those. Just... <laughs> well, no, I, I will say that that uh, I did watch the videos with Mike, and uh, uh, I mean, I think he's a fantastic instructor. I was definitely taking notes because like. You know, I consider myself a player first and instructor second, but I really tried to, you know, bring those two worlds together. And uh, um, Mike, it was great at explaining things, and uh, and the fact that he's very knowledgeable with theory. I'm definitely not as heavy on the theory approach. So, so hopefully, between Mike and I, we'll be able to offer something for everybody. You know, um, the way I like to approach uh, teaching is, uh, you know, theory is obviously super important. It really helps you to just understand just the full scope of like navigating through you know musical ideas and, and creating and stuff but um for me it's like i feel like if you can play a chord and you can play a lick there's a lot more you can do with just the ability to play like a really simple thing and uh, my approach is always like teaching you how to get more miles out of what you already know so that you don't necessarily have to learn like complex new concepts or new scales or new chords or anything like that because most people think they got to learn all this new stuff and then when they do learn it they don't really understand how to apply it and so it just becomes like you know you learn a new scale and you play it and then you just play the scale but you don't really it's a uh, i think guthrie govin one one video it's like it's like sometimes the scale plays you when it's just <laughs> i think it's definitely my case <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone man i think it, it affects everybody uh including myself so a lot of the things that we'll be going over today will you know and if those you know watching or listening are uh, uh, if they're new ideas to them they're going to be like reminders for me too so we're all learning together you know sure 
I mean, something I wanted to kind of intro this with is, uh, you know, I do demo videos. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably know that already. Uh, I had a comment the other day on a video where a guy was like, oh, like at this minute, Mark, you started playing that riff that you always play and it's fine, but I'm sick of hearing it. And I commented back. I was like, I know I'm sick of playing it. I was like, it's just like my safety lick. I know it's going to cover like all the strings and give me some lead parts and some chord parts to jump around in. Yeah. And because like the way that the video production goes, like I spend like a full day and a half sometimes working on the playing parts in these videos and you get in this mindset like, I don't want to risk this shot. This is a good shot. I'm on a good take. I don't want to risk like playing something out there. I'm just going to lay into my safety riff and I'm going to do what's comfortable with what I know what works. And I really like want to, sh I want to show you like what I play and then maybe you can help me like get past that and maybe find some new stuff that has like the same function sure. of being like a good safety riff that covers like the range of the guitar for like playing for effects and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, when you're doing demos, I get it. Like you're taking a more utilitarian approach. It's like, this is meant to showcase how yeah. it sounds over chords, how it sounds over, you know. I'm not trying to write like an amazing song when I'm doing a demo. <laughs> <laughs> I do too many demos. I do, I've never written that many songs in my life. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, as far as like when you're playing by yourself, a lot of times, and there's no, like, there's no other purpose other than you're just playing by yourself. It's easy to kind of get lost in, in, in just the, the, the boredom and, and self-deprecation of like, you know, you're just like, I, why can't I play anything new, you know? Right, right. <laughs> like, I just fall into muscle memory and do the same yeah. things over and over again. So here, here's that riff I was talking about. Like I just kind of play around in that space. Yeah. You know? Well, first of all, like that's a pretty cool sounding, like everything you just did sounded cool to me. But then again, it's the first time I'm hearing it. So. But I, I do it like almost every <laughs> video is the problem. I also do yeah, this, yeah. this thing was like just a walk up, walk down to show every note. And then at the end of it, I do the same dumb thing every time. So here's that walk up, walk down. can't stop doing that. <laughs> and that's like not even me trying to play something, that's just me showing like, oh, here's a range of notes across a scale. Right. So you can hear every string, a couple notes on every string, and then like a big strum, you know? <laughs> well, okay, so the, the I guess the first thing, uh, you know, and, and like a lot of these, um, these tips, I guess I'm gonna give you, uh, are actually really, really simple ideas that are meant to sort of break the mold of like, you know, if you're playing a certain, you know, amount of chords in the same order and you're playing the licks in the same order and, you know, always starting and ending the same, little things like just changing like one or two ways that you navigate through that same riff can start to break down that sort of, you know, like, uh, like really just, um, uh, what, what's the word? There's like a, a, there's a thing called myelination right in the brain. It's like when you build a new habit, it's like you you build this neural pathway and then when you repeat the habit it like gets reinforced with all right. these like proteins or whatever. I don't, I'm not a scientist, but I know that that's a real thing. And like let's blame let's blame it on proteins. Exactly. Yeah, blame it on proteins, man. You just got to <laughs> <laughs> I need to switch brands of muscle milk. <laughs> <milk. And>, you know, <laughs> that's really it, what we're going to walk away with here like if you're stuck in a rut <laughs> Playing the same riffs because you're drinking too much muscle. Milk. Too much muscle milk. Switch brands. Switch switch <laughs> brands. Start with simple changes like switching the brand, and then it could have a huge compound. Go down to down GNC, the road. get a different brand of muscle milk. You're gonna be safe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and like uh, like you know, not to get too deep into, but like it, it takes a long time to like demyelinate if right. that makes sense. So when you're building a new habit, that's why it takes like hundreds of hours to do that. So, so, but little things like that can just kind of start to break down that process. So like, show me that riff, that first riff again. I'm pretty out of tune here, but it's basically <laughs> like an open A thing. It okay. gives me some room to do a little bit of like. 
Um, and then go between like G and E chords and A chords and stuff. Right. Well, the, like the first thing that came to mind, you know, when I saw you play that is introduce a new chord. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> There's more chords? Am I blowing your mind already? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of what kind of witchcraft is this? There's more chords than E, G, and A. You know what? The, I mean, they oh, are, there's minors. There are. There's e also minor, there, G there minor. Are, yeah, there okay. are minors, but I'm not even. I'm not even. We're not even there yet. You know, I mean, for instance, you could throw a D chord in there. I didn't see a single D chord in there. So when you're playing, okay, yeah. So okay, so for instance, in the key that you're in, the key of A, right? When you throw it, like you know, a D chord is the four chord of A. So if you're playing an A, a D chord will always work. Okay. You know? So you can throw it in almost like random spots in that whole like progression and riffage that you do. And what it'll do is it'll immediately kind of derail when you throw, it's almost like a pattern interrupt. Like you've just like, okay, now that I've landed on the D, I almost feel like I have to play something different as a follow up mm. instead of playing the same. You know, or what you know what you were doing. Okay. So, okay. So if you, for example, if you um, if you like held on the D chord instead before going to G, what kind of like like what riff instinctively would you want to play after that using the same you know patterns and in, in right. frets that you've already done. And you went to the C and like now, so that was a really nice, you know, transition right there. And it immediately added a new kind of fresh element yeah. to what you were playing. I mean, this plays into like the, the theory that Mike was dropping on me. Mm. So I really need to like sit and figure out what chords work together. Like, right. And, and, these different uh, like circles of, of theory and stuff like that. Because it sure. didn't even occur to me. Like it sounds stupid now. It didn't <laughs> even occur to me to throw a D into that riff at all. <laughs> no, it's okay. And you know what? It, it's, it's honestly not because you don't understand theory it's it's because that's how strong the habit is yeah the the, the idea of deviating from it as far as your brain is concerned is like well like i said it, it's right? like fully like a safety riff thing right we're like i'm playing it because i don't want to screw up another take i want to keep going you know <laughs> yeah well okay and this is where theory you know can be really helpful obviously understanding you know what chords in a progression work under a certain key and also like what scales would work around what chords that absolutely would would really help you so that when you're on the fly you kind of know where to go but you know if you want to save yourself the time of like learning you know all that theory at least you know if you're in a pinch i don't know you can actually just experiment so like when you play when you play that d chord and then you play that next lick maybe in your brain you're like i don't know if this is going to sound good but i'm going to go for it is that right. kind of what you were thinking yeah yeah all right so and it ended up sounding great well it, i was it, also, i was on the d and then it's like i'll just go from here you right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. My finger's already here. I know that I can slide down to there, and it'll. I'm on scale. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I exactly. So, uh, and, and technically, you know, like that that type of uh, that lick can work over a G two. Mm -hmm. You're going to the G. Now. Yeah. 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 So like, um, I can't see his fretboard from this angle. <laughs> We're gonna have to. <laughs> There you go. You really need uh, to get a glass guitar so I can see through to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> or this should just be a screen right here that just like <laughs> just it shows an inverted. Uh... I played around with the idea of grabbing a big mirror and sticking it here. So <laughs> next time I'll get a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, like so so that lick you know can work over different chords and even like what you were doing there the or whatever mm -hmm. that kind of lick right there is the perfect. Um, you can almost consider that like a, like a focal point, so you can play. And you can see how like that lick has a different sort of sound when you pair it with a different chord. You know, and this is where you can experiment, you know, like, again, if, if you if you don't want to really take the time, even though I would recommend learning the theory at some point, but if you just want like a quick result, um, experiment, trial and error, you know, because when you're playing by yourself, you're free from the judgment of YouTube and uh, the world, except for right now that we're, uh, <laughs> that we're filming all of this. But so get ready, buckle I up. I don't Ryan. play without a camera rolling, so I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have uh, flexed my own luxury. When I have it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Although, I mean, you know, with with uh, with the stuff that I'm that I'm working on right now, I'm going to be under the same uh, lens of scrutiny. So yeah, I'm, well, I'm ready you, for it. You're on a, a lesson site now. Yeah. You yeah. want you want to soft pitch that right now? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay, so uh, so I, I work for Guitar Mastery Method, uh, which guitarmasterymethod.com is the website. There is a YouTube channel as well, uh, just Guitar Mastery Method. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, a group of instructors and just a company in general. And um, I the, the guys there really, really care about teaching something uh, that, that makes an impact with people. You know, um, so, so the way that they approach teaching, when I was getting trained by them, we actually had like a two week, like onboarding sort of process where they're based out of New Zealand. So I flew out to New Zealand, Whoa. To, to Napier, New Zealand. Can, and I, get, then... can I get an application? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask the boys upstairs, or I should say the boys Downstairs. in the future, because this is, so what today's Monday, right? It's uh -huh. their Tuesday right now. So they live in the future. It's kind uh -huh. of, uh, who knows? That's how cutting edge publish. these guys are. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the future down they're in New literally Zealand. In the future, and their toilets flush the other way. Or is that they, just Australia? Um, you know, I didn't really notice, but now now I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to just to find out. I'll fly out tomorrow. <laughs> so guitar mastery method. Yeah, we'll have a link for yes this stuff down below. to debunk that that myth <laughs> uh, or prove it. I don't know. Yeah, um, prove it. But but anyway, so when I was out there, they they really and I've been teaching guitar on and off for almost sixteen years. And they completely redefine everything I thought I knew about teaching because they have such a such a very uh, uh, just amazing method that 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 they have so many success stories from people who have like taken their courses or watched their channel the way they uh, describe things and explain things and I'm still I'm still in the process of like you know just reaching that level you know um, but they're uh, they're amazing so so they taught me a lot as far as like how to teach and how to actually like get people to really learn and progress and grow and and to um, and to almost make it like clockwork. It's like, no matter what, if you use like the methods that, that they use, people are going to watch it and they're going to learn something regardless of what it is. Like everyone's going to learn at least one like mm. real important gold nugget, which I mean, that in essence is what teaching should be. Yeah. You know, you need to be able to walk away from one lesson with like a, a big win, I'd say. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And that's what I noticed with the two that I did with Mike. I mean, some backstory for, for me really quick. I'm completely self-taught. Yeah, I took like three lessons when I first started guitar, and it got frustrated that the the, the teacher wasn't teaching me, yeah, you know, like pipeline and wipeout and stuff. If she wanted to teach me <laughs> Beatles songs, I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else I've I've learned is completely self taught. And just like sitting down uh, with the two lessons with Mike, and obviously with you too, I'm gonna learn stuff. But like he was trying to teach me less, like like theory stuff, and mm. I walked away with like little riffs and little licks mm. and stuff that I hadn't considered like even playing before it's like you pull stuff out of the lessons even if it's not like what you intended right to learn or what the teacher intended for you to learn like it's, i'm still trying to soak up and like process like all that theory stuff oh yeah man. <laughs> but it's, it's like a lot i walk away with like little country ricks and lifts and riffs and stuff that i can play and i didn't learn how to talk in those <laughs> <laughs> those lessons apparently <laughs> But like little little ways that I can move around the fretboard that have opened up to me now and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, thinking about playing a D chord every now and then. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And like, yeah, everyone's takeaway is different. You know, two people can take the same lesson and learn something completely different. And full transparency, I'm a completely self-taught guitarist too. Uh, I never went to music school. I got accepted into Berkeley out of high school. I applied mm -hmm. just because I wanted... As a kid, Wanted to I see had, what you could do. Yeah, and and uh, but you know, I, I it, my parents didn't want that for me, like so I, I took a different path as far as college goes. But I learned on the streets, you could say, uh, and uh, and 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 what I mean by that is is from actually like gigging and going out there right. and like learning, literally playing on the streets. <laughs> like nice. the only time I could say that, not completely ironically, you know. You did busking. But I did busking. Yeah, yeah. me um, too. Yeah, and it's fun, you know, and aside from that, just also like just gigging, you know, from like a, a relatively young age. And then now these days I tend to learn more and I've taken lessons since then. Like I've had the opportunity to like take lessons from some of my biggest heroes. And, uh, and and I learn a lot that Go way. Go ahead and name drop if you want. Okay. Uh, well, like I've taken lessons from guys like Josh Smith, who if you don't know, uh, is like, a, I mean, just a blues giant in like the L.A. Uh, the L.A. blues scene. But I mean. He tours all over the place, like him and like, you know, guys like Kirk Fletcher and like they, you know, they play with like Joe Bonamassa and stuff like that. Like, so like they're among that camp of like, just like blues rock, dad rock, just gods. Right, right. right. And so. Um, father rock gods. Father rock gods. And, and, 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I, like I, I learned a lot from them, but honestly, I find that I learn the most these days. Like with every gig, I feel like I get 1% better because especially with the way that, um, uh, the type of gigs I play with, especially with country bands, you know, and like bands out of like Nashville and stuff, the way that they do it is so stressful because you can get on stage with no rehearsal and they'll just literally shout the chord changes to you. And like, it is, it's insane, but you, it's like a trial by fire thing. And you, you learn so much, you become a better, uh, you, you, you become more sharp, you know, just as a musician, like just being able to switch things up on the fly, being able to understand and process things on the fly, like literally being on stage in front of an audience and trying not to look stupid, you know, that stress really, you know, takes you there. So, uh, so I've learned a lot in that kind of way. So I have kind of a unique approach, you know, like uh, I don't have like a music degree, but, um, I've, I've learned a, a enough in, in terms of what actually happens out there, like in the music industry with professional musicians. And, uh, that's the kind of stuff. What I take away from that is the kind of stuff I like to teach. Um, and I feel like that in, in a way that's kind of where uh, I guess I fit in as far as like the instructor niche, you know, uh, there's so many brilliant, uh, instructors out there that, that have a lot of knowledge that, that I can't even cover, but, I feel like with me, I have uniqueness in terms of my own experiences that um, so far with everyone that I've taught them to, like they seem to really get a lot out of it. Right. You know? You've got practical knowledge. You've got that street smart. This, yeah, you know, and like, <laughs> thanks for acknowledging that because I actually kind of, I'm like, I, you know what I do? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't usually give myself that credit because it just like, but you know, it, it's, it's, that's how my experience has been. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we were jamming around at, at Sean's, I was just watching you play and it's like, he's doing stuff in the space where I play, the, the, the places my fingers are comfortable going. It's not like you're dropping like double tapping things that I can't follow or something like that. But like, I never play anything in that order. I never play anything with like that finesse. I'm like, they sitting there like trying to study what you're doing and like, figure I, out like if I could do it too, you know? I think it was this lick too. It was that. Yeah. Ooh. Something like that, yeah. Like I, like I hear that and like, even though I've been playing for like, Two decades now, it's like, oh, I can't do that. That's, that's not in, within my ability. That sounds too good. I, man, I, 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 <laughs> but then I totally play like that many notes in that span of time on the regular. Exactly. Just to me, it just, it doesn't sound like anything. It just feels like, oh, here goes my muscle memory again. Like, blah, 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 you know. And, th and that, that's exactly it. Like that right there is the reason why I teach the way I teach because it's like you can already play the kind of stuff. It's not like I have better chops than you. It's that I just am thinking differently in the order and the arrangement of a certain amount of notes that you're familiar with that you already play. And yet it sounds fresh to you because it's an idea you haven't explored yet. Right. So show so, me that again. Yeah, sure. So 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 just, just so you guys know, I straight stole this from Eddie Shaver who like... Uh, uh, you know, just incredible like country guitar player, uh, Billy Joe Sh uh, Shaver's son. And he does this uh, lick in the uh, um, the song. Uh, they do a rendition of Georgia on a Fast Train, the Johnny Cash song. And uh, the song's in the key of A. And and how he d goes through the whole progression is it's in, it literally is playing like A, D, and then instead of E, the five chord, he plays that lick. And yet that lick covers the ground where you're like, oh, he's playing over the five chord, even though he didn't actually play a chord. So it goes like this. It's like... So like right there, that is something you play over an E, right? Yeah. And, and and that right there is a combination of pentatonic and Dorian and, and major, you know? Uh, so you're starting, you know, just like if you're an E pentatonic, right? So, so you're starting on, on the, 12th fret there? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> and then, you know, just... There. So that right there is in the Dorian. That that right there. Oh, right. I, I know why I'm not getting... I'm, he's on the neck pickup. I'm not on the neck pickup. So just, oh, yeah. I just switched over. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Close. You're doing... There you go. 14th fret. All right. And then you're going to do 14th fret on the G. And then back to 12 on the B. And then... See, there's... There's something I would never do. I would never go back. I always go forward. Right, you know, because there you go. And then when you, here, you're going to catch the 12th fret on the G and then hammer on to the 13th fret. So. There you go. And that right oh, there is shoot. a cool enough lick by itself. 
in the, in. Okay, okay, okay. I keep messing up. Here we go. Wrong string. So close. Close, yeah, you just want to go I back didn't to go, the... I didn't go back. So, so real quick, uh, j just to demonstrate like how already the, the process that's going on in Ryan's brain, the proteins... <laughs> The muscle milk is really working. So, like, friends, just the idea, like you said, just going back is is a was like a foreign concept for yeah. your fingers, right? Which sounds so, so stupid. Well, no, like, it, 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 it's, it's not though. I mean, it's like even me, man. Like, 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 I, I, like, if my dancing, if my playing was dancing, it would just look like me running across the room. <laughs> Never once taking a step yeah. backwards. <laughs> That's actually a great metaphor. Like <laughs> running across the room and then running backwards across the room. <laughs> never, <laughs> never shimmying along no. the way or you know doing the electric slide or anything like that. Yeah, man. See, you, you know, like that's actually a great metaphor. Like that, that's kind of how you can think of it. If you're running, a, running through a scale, you're literally running across the dance floor and then running back. Is this dancing? <laughs> Am I dancing? <laughs> I think I I think we just I think like that's a we should make that a thing. It just I, got to the core of my entire issue here. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, man. And and um, and so right there. So what we're doing is we're 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 running at first. Oh, sorry. And then and then we take that step back. And then we do a little little two step forward, right? There you go. Yeah. And that's just half the lick there, right? And then yeah. it goes into... Now that right there highlights the, the major chord, right? So it's going... Oh! There you go. So that's a major third there, which we hit when we did this. So see? Ah! Just the octave, right? So we're connecting the dots now. So that little guy right there... That's part of the E chord. That's how like yep. process it. So that repeats. So, so that's like gives me that part of the E chord up here on right. the, the low A string too. And, and the thing is, the reason why that lick works so well to substitute the actual play in the E chord um, is because we're highlighting the major third, right? So if, if we did a pentatonic run, it'll have a different sound. So if it was like, It's, I mean, it works, it's passable, but it doesn't highlight the chord quite as much. When we're doing... That is like almost like plants in your brain that, oh, like that sound, that's the E major uh, chord he's playing, right? Yeah, there. yeah. Like he's, he's covering that ground. So that's the thing about a lot of these, like, uh, like these Nashville guys I've been playing with, you know, like their background is, is country music and, and blues and stuff. And like, that's found in so much... Uh, so much of country music where like, you know, when you see like chicken picking players that are playing like insanely fast and not only that, but but it sounds melodic and cool and like it, they're outlining different chords, you know, so if you're playing like uh, like a chicken picking lick, you know, like in the key of A, right? Something like that. And then, yeah, when I'm doing that, you when you're doing that, right? <laughs> and, and then it moves to, to the to the D chord, right? The four chord. You, you're doing something like that. You're highlighting the chords, and like so, I sort of took. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a great chicken picker by any stretch, but I took that kind of concept, and I'm like, you can apply that to any style. It doesn't matter because you play chords in pretty much every style. You play scales in pretty much every style. So might as well use that way of thinking, you know, with all of it. So, uh, so for example, like going back to the 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 riff that you were playing, right? What you can actually do. So you have the D chord, right? And then you are playing something that, you know, or like, um, yeah, like like right there, that highlights the in the, the D major arpeggio, right? You're outlining the chord. And when you when you actually, uh, I kind of did this by accident, but it sounded good. When you go down to the second fret there, there you go. And then and then when you want, let's say, move to the G chord, you can go. Because you're literally landing on the, yeah. the tonic, right? The root note of the G chord. 
<laughs> this is all, this is all part of it. Your 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 fingers and your brain are yeah. fighting right now, right? You're just... It was somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah, well, like you can really build melodies by highlighting the chords. Is basically what I was trying to say in, in a very uh, um, so what's the, uncomprehensive way. We've thrown <laughs> a, a D chord into this riff thing that I can never stop doing. What's like the <laughs> what is the worst chord that I could throw in there? Like what would like really hmm. derail the whole thing? What's like the opposite? Like like if I think in color theory, I can think of the opposite of blue. It's orange. Right. You know, like um, what is the opposite of what would work with this scale? Just out of like morbid curiosity. Well, okay, if you're in the key of A, then probably it would, you know, with with the type of licks that you were playing, if you played like a uh, a, a B flat. Okay. It, it, it does. But it does that sounds kind of like rock and roll. Well, well you see. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It, it definitely opens up a new way of like navigating the rest of the chord progression. But if you threw that into the mix of everything else that you're doing, uh -huh. wouldn't exactly work. But although, um, if you were in the key of G, it actually would work because I don't know. That sounds kind of cool to me. It do, it, well, no, no, no. I mean, you're right. It does. I mean, but as far as like, uh, just as, I was just trying to think like what would be the most like inconsistent okay. with everything else that you were playing. If you want to talk like the actual absolute worst thing, maybe if you play like a minor second in there, that would probably or like an augmented chord. You know, right. that probably would. But I mean, it we're in not a, here to get that jazz deep. Song. In it. <laughs> it's song. It's just jazz. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> you can play any. Of <laughs> That's uh, is that the Mary the had a little lamb? Like? The where did I get that back? So, so the shape. This is the augmented chord, very close. So you want to have like so if we're doing it here, you want to have your pinky right there on the seventh fret of the D string there, and then these two fingers on the uh, right. sixth fret, and then just move that shape. <laughs> why why do I why do I ask to do this to myself? <laughs> I mean, that's why they call it morbid curiosity, right? <laughs> so yeah, Okay, that, show me that shit. Okay. I right. need to put that in my pocket. So the so this is what's called a minor second, which naturally is very dissonant, right? So I'm playing basically but on top of each other. So yeah, just And you can yes. Okay. <laughs> Anywhere you play it is gonna sound terrible, so you'll get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm yeah. learning something very useful. So, so if you want to, you know, if you're going, just throw that in there for. A, I'm gonna throw that in at church every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> or in the middle of Amazing Grace. Let's see. <laughs> so here's here's a question. Like if you were doing a pedal demo, if you were doing what I do, and you needed to have a riff, uh that was like completely different than what I play, but it covers all the strings and gives you a balance between like picking individual strings and doing a little bit of chord work. Like, what would you mm. do? Like, just out of your pocket. Well, since I've never actually done an official pedal demo before, this is a lot of pressure. But I would, uh, what I'd probably do, okay, if I wanted to demonstrate the chords, um, I would just kind of like, I would start with a chord like an A, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would just play, I would just kind of play around with chords in that, that work that like, in relation to A, right? Um, using circle of fifths or whatever, right? So I could do like yeah, whatever, A to like a D and to a, a D, you know. So, you know, I, I would just use chords that kind of worked and I, I depending on how, you, cause sometimes when you're playing a pedal and you feel really inspired and you start like ideas start coming out, you know, um, if that was happening, then I would really just kind of go all over the place. I would start like. I 
I don't know. Like it, I would just he would just play on. really good. Like, I just, no, I mean, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> it, it's, well, blame it on the pedal, right? The pedal's making me do that. It's not me anymore. It's the pedal speaking through me. But um, but but in all seriousness, though, like if I were, if I, let's say, if I wanted to demonstrate the chords, um, like I said, I would, I would, my safe zone would just be like, okay, if you're playing a major chord, you can play a four chord, which are the four of uh, um, you know, of A is D, and the five is is E. And then the minor six is F sharp, just to give it some added color, you know. You Sounds know, like just, we're writing a song here. Yeah, Sounds yeah. Nice. I mean, it. it, it uh, yeah, yeah. And you know what? That actually, what you just did, kind of segues into another thing that I that's a, that's a good exercise when you're trying to break out of a rut is changing up your timing. Hmm. So. The first way, like we talked about, was just giving yourself a pattern interrupt, right? So if you uh, if you find yourself in the middle of a chord progression or a lick that you're playing, try to stop yourself and be like, okay, I'm gonna go somewhere else now. And that will just kind of start breaking down those proteins, breaking down the muscle milk in your brain. I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> <They're> so worth... <laughs> like hilarious and ignorant. It probably isn't even pro proteins. I don't know, I don't know. Don't That's listen to my- carbs. It's probably, it's totally Switch carbs. Switch up your carbs. Go keto and you'll be- <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but but just you know simple ideas like that just like start small like that and then start doing things like changing up your timing so what you were doing there like instead of just footballing the chords you were like adding some rhythm to it you know will kind of almost make you it'll like kind of force you to come up with like fresh song writing ideas right um, and, and you can change the, you know, you can change the tempo, you can change the time signature, whatever. You can do like reggae. I didn't know you were openly reggae. I, <laughs> this is my coming out. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Who knew? You know? I got Mom, my there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be wearing that, that cap with the fake dress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, there's there's different ways, you know, like it, literally just the, the changing up the timing can sure. can make you can almost force you to play it differently. Well, what's what's the know? different timing I could do with my signature tired riff over here? Okay, so like. show me show me the signature tired riff. Over here. Throw that D in there. So right there, you know, it really, uh, uh, it has that kind of like, almost like modern country sort of like uh, tempo and vibe, you know, it sounds uh -huh. really cool. So one thing you could do is you can um, add a little bit of uh, funk to it and, and just kind of add certain accents. So if you're doing something like, something like that, but then you can add a very subtle, like, so like, Throwing a little rest in there. So, so try to throw in just like a rest in there without, um, okay. like with like I'm don't constantly play. Yeah, you're playing too much. You're overplaying. So we did, so if we had like a metronome going, you can almost like, that, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't, I don't mean it's okay it's that you're terrible. Not okay that I'm not terrible validating rhythm. that, but, but, um, but you know, like um, um, another way a metronome can be helpful is it can sort of fill in the, those blanks for you. So you can just let the metronome handle the beat when you're resting and then right. just come right back in. So, um, and like a little rest like that, you know, how, like they say, it's not the notes you play. It's the notes you don't play. Right. That's really about how like using rests properly can really make notes pop out more, you know? So instead of going like, you can do something like, you know, like I just showed you. You know, something like that. There you go. There you go. Exactly what I'm talking about like yeah. starting on a different beat so you know you can start like you know you can start to lick like this for instance like right 
You can start it on like one, like one, two, three, four. And then you can start it on two. One, two, three, four, one, two. And like very subtly, it kind of changes the sort of Sure. Attitude of it a little bit. Another thing is 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 if you're playing like uh, um, like sixteenth notes, like instead of just one, two, or, or I mean, sorry, um, eighth notes, one and two and three, right? So you can do like the and of two, for example, like one and two and three and four and one and two. Or sorry, and of two, one and two. I can't. I can't. I'm not supposed to talk and play. Sorry. That's all right. So I'm not right. going to count. Do, you can do it here. It'll be fine. <laughs> all right. So uh, no, I literally can't. It's so hard oh, for me oh. to count. And play at the same time. You need carbs, man. I need carbs, man. I need, <laughs> I need to change my brand of carbs. <laughs> um, but but you know this. I'm so used to a metronome, so like uh, or a drummer, like so. When you have that, you know, just like doing that work for you, you know. So I'll count leading up to it. But if I don't, if I stop counting when I play, it's because I'm trying to focus on one sure, thing sure. at a time. So if we're doing the and of two, so if we're doing one and two and three and four and one and two. <laughs> It adds like a almost like a up tempo swing or like a upbeat swing to it. Yeah. You know, uh, so it it takes that exact same lick and it already gives it a new sort of context, new sort of uh, light. And uh, I think uh, simple things like that is like just have a metronome going, have it going at a slow enough tempo that you can comfortably play over it, and then just kind of keep in mind the numbers of the beats in your head, and then just experiment. Start with you know, like play on different beats and it'll give it a fresh new sort of sound. And and I don't think we utilize timing that much because a lot of times as guitar players, we're playing at home. We're not playing with a drummer friend all the time, yeah. right? So we don't really have that, but we, we need to develop that that talent, or not talent, that ability. Because if you see guys like Tommy Emmanuel, for example, he's a one man band and he's just tapping his foot mm -hmm. the whole time, man. Like that- I mean, admittedly, like, I think rhythm stuff is probably like my weakest area. Mm. Like. I, like I said, I'm self-taught. I didn't spend any time teaching myself that stuff. I didn't spend any time practicing with metronomes or anything like that. Mm. Uh, every now and then I'll bust out like the Beat Buddy mm -hmm. or something like that. And I'll play, I can play with a drummer. I can sure. play with like a, like a drum track uh, and I just fall into what feels natural, but I don't sit there and think about, you know, like 16th notes or 8th notes or, you know, rests or anything mm. like that. Like I'm, I'm admittedly just like an idiot <laughs> when it comes to timing <laughs> well and I, I should that should really be the thing that i probably do a deep dive on and like try to teach myself honestly well the 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 easiest way to do it honestly is a metronome is, is great because um you know obviously it does all that thinking for you right as far mm -hmm. as like keeping you in time but another thing is start with like a painfully slow tempo. Right. A lot of times um, it can be easy to play a lick really fast, but when you have to slow it down, or if you can just try slowing it down a lot, it's actually harder to play it really slow mm -hmm. than it is to play it really fast. And that's again where muscle memory is kind of more in control than you are. And I find like like I do better in songs that are fast because it's just like, oh, I'll just as fast as just I can go. Just your way through it, it'll, right? Yeah. It'll I line up at some point. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same thing. I don't know if you're trying to like the same thing with like with like shred guitar, which is like I haven't really uh, I still love it's something I'll always love like that inner 16 year old will always mm -hmm. be there. I don't obviously use it in my gig because there's no not a lot of money in it. But, you know, like you can play like, like or, you know, yeah, you could, you could just do that. Like if you do that, you, you kind of have to play it fast because that's how it sounds good. But if you were to play it really slow. It, it sometimes it is harder to just play it slow and evenly. Yeah. Because you're you're you you don't have the option of just spazzing your way through it, right? Mm -hmm. Muscle memory can't help you in, in that context, you know. So, um, but but that's actually uh, where you need to start. You know, like every instructor, I, I will pretty much agree that you want to start slow and gradually build up speed. But sometimes we start fast and we never go back to trying it out slow. And that's why when we try something slow it actually is harder to play. Yeah. I mean, um, that goes back to when I first started, I took three lessons and I didn't want to learn the Beatles. I wanted to learn yeah. Pipeline and Wipeout yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> I probably should have stuck around and learned a couple like strummy Beatles songs instead. Like, well, yeah. To like feel the way music's actually supposed to like flow and feel the beat. And sure. And, and like I reference funk or like I love funk music and funk guitar. And like the cool thing about it is you can play funk really fast and really slow and it sounds cool. So I can play like a, a something like... <laughs> It's 
something like that. But then if I play it really slow, it's like filthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's and, and even though it sounds like I'm playing it, um, I'm actually I'm playing it slow so I can you know to get good at playing it at a slow tempo. But it also sounds cool too at the same time. So uh, so like that's why you know I like to reference funk because when you play it fast or slow like it sounds cool so um so when you're playing a chord progression like even the one you were doing like the uh when you're throwing in those rests it it, it almost invites you to play it slower so try playing it like not half speed that'd be way too slow but sure. like I don't know like 75 percent speed like even that was a little too fast something like the script there <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's okay though but like i can tell you you're grooving with it you right know? right the, the thing is like when, when whenever i see like a guitar player who's like just by himself and he's like grooving to what he's playing like i'm like that's that's how you got to be you know like that's i will always say that rhythm guitar is way more important than lead guitar just in terms of um I, I, like guitar players that are really worth their salt i feel like spend a lot more time on rhythm, even if they're like they can shred their balls off you know like but if they if that they, sounds painful. It, it, <laughs> painful but, but it's worth it, you know, because they can just, it's just so, uh, you know. But, but when you, like, but, but, but when they focus mostly on, like, rhythm, even when they play fast, you can almost sense the rhythm is there. Right, yeah. But when a, when a guitar player focuses strictly on lead guitar and doesn't even really practice rhythm, a lot of times uh, when that rhythm is lost on the, on the lead, you know, it, it, it just, it's... It sounds bad. You know, it, it's, it's... It's not so much that it sounds bad, but I feel like that that's just uh, it's it's a compound effect of just the wrong habits, right? You know, because you learn really quickly when you become like a, a consistently gigging musician how rhythm guitar is what gets you paid more than lead guitar. In fact, you could almost translate certain notes into dollars. Like there's, I'm working on that actually. What? I'm working on the formula. What notes are those? But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, you know, if you play a lot of pentatonic, that's already like that's the money scale right there. There's a reason why even the pros never get bored of that scale. Um, I'm in the money. You're in the money, right? <laughs> and uh, so never not play the pentatonic scale. When people say like, oh, never not play the pentatonic scale. If you're if ever, you want money, yeah. <laughs> if you wish I do. If uh, yeah, who doesn't want money, right? But if you if you're ever if you feel like you're bored with the pentatonic scale, you know, this is gonna sound a little in your face, but it's not the scale's fault. Uh, it's because you're not using the scale enough. You're not diversifying how you use it enough. Like anyone who who really masters the pentatonic scale, if you want to call it that, I'm not cons I'm not considering myself, but people I know uh, that like play the pentatonic scale so much, but every time they play it, it sounds fresh. It sounds cool. It's like people like that will never get bored of the pentatonic scale. And and, and uh, the pentatonic scale is never meant to get boring. There's infinite ideas you can pull out of it. And um, that kind of segues into. Tip number three I have for you. There we go. Tip three. I'm seg. I'm on a seg. I'm on a segway. Freaking. We're on a segway. We're on a segway. <laughs> We're just. I don't even. It's just coming out. I don't even. I. I don't have a script or nothing. It's crazy. All right. So. So uh, the tip number three I have is to limit yourself. So uh, just like how with the metronome you want to limit yourself by by doing like a slower tempo. Uh, when you're playing, uh, and this works especially with lead, right? Um, if you limit yourself to just a certain handful of like frets that you're allowed to play over, let's say the entirety of a backing track, okay, you're going to force yourself because otherwise you'll just go insane, but you're going to force yourself to come up with different sounding ideas. So the perfect like little box in the pentatonic scale that works is just these. Yeah. The, those four frets. I mean, you can bend them, you can vibrato, you can do all kinds of slide them, whatever. But you can't go outside of those, you know. Uh, you know R.J. Ronquillo, like he has a video mm -hmm. where it's like you got to pretend the other notes are lava. You know, it, it, it's the it's it's such a brilliant way of thinking of it. And uh, and this is something that you know a lot of a lot of people do, and, and and it's it's highly recommended. And and I can speak from experience that it really it forces you to come up with fresh ideas. So if you only have 
those four notes, and and also you gotta lose your pick too. Oh shoot. Yeah. So this is serious. So so away with the pick for now, because again, it's gonna force you to just you know you're gonna have to force yourself to get comfortable playing with your hands. You're gonna get forced to kind of develop the sort of relationship in terms of your the dynamics in your playing because you have to be dynamic if you're just playing four frets. You know, you can't just play the same fret in the same way because, like I said, you'll go crazy. So, you you know, you, you can start with that stock pentatonic, like, right? There you go. But then change up, like, how you start it, how you finish it, and also, like, kind of how you embellish it. So if you want to go, instead of that, one thing I like to do is, like, ooh. See that? Yeah. Like that little thing right there, right? See, that is that is the face of I don't even know what I'd call yeah, it. Yeah, I've never made that sound before. <laughs> yeah, I mean Yeah, and then same thing on the like if you're doing But then do I don't know where you got it on there. I'm sorry, yeah, I gotta I got a mirror. Okay. So on the D string, I was doing the same thing. Yeah. So that little glissando is yeah. just, it just already is, is fresh and it adds like a new element. And then you saw it in Ryan's face. Like it actually makes you feel something. That's how I like to navigate. You know, like I really, I think feel is something that, uh, you know, it's, it's not quantifiable, but if it's, if you're playing something and you're like, Ooh, that's feeling something. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You want you want to let that kind of be your compass when you're coming up with new ideas, and then of course you build your arsenal based on licks that make you feel certain things. And if you if that feeling gets stale after a while, explore ways to make you you know different ways of playing to make you feel new things. You know that's just kind of the never ending process. You know you're never gonna get there. You're always getting there, right? Mm. Um, you know you're never gonna reach a point where you're like I know everything there is to know about playing guitar and music theory. And uh, I mean you know you'd have to live to be a million to get there probably, but. Uh, and by then, no one's gonna even listen to music anymore. Exactly, music's gonna be way <sighs> phased out. People yeah. are just gonna be music numbers. is over in a million years. <laughs> We're just gonna be just numbers. Like, no, it'll just... it'll just be screeching and screaming and crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I mean, maybe to some is music. I don't like, know. Like low toned like moans. <laughs> 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 the future's so awful. It's gonna go back to it's like a ver like a twisted Gregorian chant. Yeah, your Ugh. your future is robots and bleeps and bloops. Mine is Mad Max. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a more exciting future. But for music, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but but again, man, it's like you just really let that feeling kind of navigate. You know, so uh, and when you learn a bunch of theory too, let let everything you learn in theory like lead you to that moment to where you're feeling something. You know. Um, and like the reason I, earlier when I said I feel like I get better every time I play like with a band, especially if I go to like a jam and there's and I'm paired up with like a bunch of great musicians and we, we've we never played before ever, but we just, you know, we all know the same song or whatever. And then we just really vibe and there's that unspoken thing going on. And like that, I mean, that that to me is like the height of the musical experience. Yeah, totally. But those moments are so few and far between. You just kind of live between those moments. But there are ways you can achieve those moments when you're just by yourself playing guitar. And like those three things that I kind of went over, at least in my experience, really help contribute to you kind of developing like those little those little wins, you know, and then you start to feel like, oh, like I I, I can do this. Yeah. Yes, you can, man. Like, oh, to <laughs> like playing with bands, like for sure has represented like my biggest jump forwards mm. as far as being a player, like figuring out how to actually like sync up with a drummer and, and understand what a bassist is doing and play with a rhythm guitarist mm -hmm. and like work with vocals and stuff like that is like, that's the school yard for me. That's where mm -hmm. I really learn how to play. And, uh, I find that when I'm sitting at home, I don't really progress that much, you know, but what, you can really take that with you. I know that whole band experience because you have all the makings of as a guitar player, you know, like, so long as we have a foot to tap with, or if we don't even have feet, we can have a metronome, right? Like we can cover that ground. You know, the 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 guitar, you know, we can do bass. Like, you know, we can we can cover that ground. We can cover, you know, like the mid-range where the guitar is, you know, and we can cover like what normally like the keyboards would do, like the higher note. You know? 
So we, we, there's a lot we can do. Like, uh, like if, even if you think back to guys like Chet Atkins, like he was like a one man orchestra with mm-hmm. just, uh, just one guitar, you know, and, and he understood that. And so in very, you know, like in smaller ways, you can really replicate that when you're by yourself. And so, uh, just to kind of recap, because I'm sure like with all the rambling I've been doing, everyone's forgotten. This what is more, about. more of like a podcast episode than <laughs> A lesson at this That's point. what I was expecting, you but know, I think so I came prepared for this. It's fun. <laughs> for rambling. I'm having a good time. Are you having a good time? I'm having a great no time. No one made it this far. I don't think so. No. <laughs> right when we're getting to the good part, the recap, right? Here we go. We should just put in the description, just like, just go to like one hour and 30 minutes yeah. in for the Jump for the forward to the, to the nugget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's right so, at the end, the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the first tip would be a pattern interrupt, right? Like if you're taking a, a riff or a lick, you always play. Throw in a different chord or a different note. And it's okay if at first, if you're like, okay, I don't know what note to play. Just experiment. Play a random note. If it sounds bad, don't play it again, right? And then just or keep, play it twice or play it twice if that's what you're into. I mean, the future, you know, is going to get here one way or another. And we may need you to help pioneer that for us. So <laughs> whatever the muscle milk is telling you to do, just yeah. <laughs> follow so, your guide. Yes, exactly. So uh, so like that is one way to just kind of start introducing like the idea of like creating something fresh. And then the next thing is changing up your timing. So like with a metronome, try playing the same riff or the same uh, lick and on a different beat. And then just kind of let it, you know, give you give you like a, a, a sort of fresh new look at that very same thing. And then the third thing is to limit yourself. So uh, if, which is what forces you to uh, it's the first time, like in a motivational way, I'm saying limit yourself. <laughs> just give <laughs> up. Just like just 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 limit yourself to nothing. Let's work on some realistic <laughs> expectations here. <laughs> <laughs> you're so, you're a three note player at best. <laughs> Time oh, to accept man. that. <laughs> I will tell you though, man, there's some three note players that can play the crap out of three notes. As long as know. they're the right money notes. Exactly. Know? So, but we're, we're going to give you one more. We're going to give you four notes, right? And uh, like an uh, uh, easy call way to limit now. yourself. Yeah, call now. 1 800 444 444. We'll throw in a fourth note. <laughs> at absolutely Supplies no Supplies are limited. <laughs> we only have like four left. <laughs> I'm giving you his four notes. <laughs> You're going to have nothing. Dude. I've got You're not nothing. Gonna, yeah. You're going <laughs> to limit yourself to just just not playing anymore. <laughs> well, hey, it's it's what it's the I'm notes you don't play, right? Blow on the guitar and whatever yeah. happens, you know? <laughs> That'll that'll create a cult following, man. <laughs> Seriously, that'll be so avant-garde. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm really into like, you know, wind core. <laughs> Breath core. Breath core. <laughs> You need really microphonic pickups for that. That's oh, going to start a whole this, new... fan of this guy just got huge lungs. He can really just like <laughs> make the guitar gently like... He's the Louis kind of Armstrong of wind core. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry I keep interrupting you. No, that's okay. This is great. Is there uh, another point? You did three points already. I did. I did, yes. And, and in fact, interrupting is part of point number one. So Point r- number one is r- interrupting. Point number two is... Uh, changing up the time, changing up the timing, and, and then number, number three, three is, is limit yourself. limiting yourself. So this obviously works best with, uh, I mean, not works best, but I typically do it when I'm playing solos and scaling and stuff. But you can with chords too. Limit yourself to just four chords, and then just really try and change up. Try using tip number one and two. Change up the timing. Change up the the, the pattern of it to just give yourself, you know, like an infinite amount of ideas with just that simple framework but then if you're playing like the pentatonic scale you know just limit limit yourself to just like that middle box within the pentatonic uh scale and like do different things bend slide you know hammer on pull off all that stuff you know you have free reign with that but don't go beyond those frets you know because then you'll your fingers will be in lava so i don't want my fingers in lava if you drop your keys in lava don't don't go after them they're gone man yeah they're gone. <laughs> if you drop your keys and the spare, you I gotta mean, drive your car. You gotta drive. You gotta go to work. You gotta get back in your house. Use your foot. Try, Use your to, fi- foot, yeah. try to find it with your foot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there are people that can play guitar with their feet, which we've all seen those viral videos. Yeah, yeah. That guy's local. There you go. Is he? Yeah. Really? I uh, used to run a little uh, all ages venue, and we got him to come play. No way. Phenomenal. 
That, the, he is. The foot playing guy. He do, he busks down in Balboa Park. Really? Yeah. I'll have to go visit him. Yeah. That, that guy, yeah. He's one of those people that, like, you see him and you're just like, you know, what excuse do I possibly have? None. What am I doing with my life? That's what I think <laughs> when I watch him play. He's you can't really good. limit yourself any more than not having arms. Yeah. So <laughs> I've got a couple of videos that I've done where I talk about maybe if you lost also your feet, but being someone who's left-handed mm. but plays like a conventionally right-handed guitar, mm. and people just get livid at me and they're like, "You cannot do that. You have to strum with your dominant hand, or you'll never learn to play correctly." And I'm like, "What about this guy?" Yeah. Wait, is he left footed? Is there is he right footed? Is there such a thing? <laughs> Fun fact, know? I'm left handed too. You're left handed too? Yeah. Legal lefties over here, man. It's more common than people I mean this is turning into a whole other video. It's more common than people realize, and I didn't realize how common it was until I did those videos. I did a little poll and I was like, there are so many people, the percentage is is so high of people who play counter to the conventional orientation mm -hmm. to the point where it's like just play whatever way you want. Yeah. Like, like, don't worry about ha what hand you write with. That's nonsense. Like, it's a two-handed instrument. Right. People, like, the, the the best advice I saw in the comment section of those videos is, like, if someone is about to learn to play guitar, they're interested, just ask them to play air guitar mm. and just have them go with whatever they do naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead I, of, like, getting all worked up about handedness with ha what hand you write with. I, I think with the... Because a, a, a luthier friend of mine back in Texas was saying that, like, whatever hand... Like, when you clap... Whatever your like clapping hand is for me was my left hand. That's He's like, two handed. That's I, oh, I which hand, which I, hand you put the power yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so which <laughs> hand should should the power hand be the fretting hand or the strumming hand? The strumming hand, but uh oh, but, I'm but in he, trouble. No, no. Here's the thing, though. It, what he said was, it doesn't mean you have to do that. But he said, if you were to ever pick up left handed guitar, you would actually learn it faster. Okay. Than you did with right hand. But then, who's got time for that? I feel like I <laughs> learned pretty quickly, though. Like I didn't feel like I had. A yeah. barrier beyond, like, my fingers hurt, you know? Yeah, well, you know, that goes into the whole, like, there's no, like, one way to do it. Like, it, with Guitar Mastery Method, our approach is we try to, well, I mean, the, the instructors on there, man, they do such an amazing job of, like, teaching you, like, 20% that you need to do 80% of the job, basically. Um, and, and that's why like their lessons have like, there's so many results that, that, you know, people have from, from watching the lessons and like, you know, uh, uh, getting the courses and stuff. Um, they, they just know how to teach, you know, like they, they've mastered teaching in a way that like a guitar player would master guitar. You know, when you combine those two, I mean, it's a crazy combo. So, um, so it's true. There's no like one way to learn, but there are ways to learn that kind of are, that save you time sure. that, um, that save you a lot of effort and energy and really try to help you break that frustration barrier more quickly and more effectively. So that's really what it comes down to. There's no right or wrong. It's just some ways, you know, are, are just kind of, I guess, easier to learn or quicker to learn. Sure. You know, so that's just kind of, I feel like that should be the approach. If you're ever looking for lessons, you know, look for the type of lessons that, um, are gonna give you that. Like if you watch one lesson video, no matter doesn't matter who it is, and you learn one gold nugget, like then your time was worth it. Yeah. But if you learn nothing or if you're not really sure what you learned or if you just stole somebody's licks, you know, find something else, I'd say, you know. So uh, no stealing licks? You think it's better to like kind of come out of, of it with like like your own interpretation of like how to use As someone who literally like use used a stolen lick in this video to like show you guys, like I can tell you firsthand, it's uh it's only, the, the, the good thing about stealing licks is obviously like it gives you something new to kind of work off of and then even something you sure. can show other people. But when it comes to, when it, because it's not yours, I know like, you know, the whole thing about like no one owns chords and scales. But uh, what I recommend is when you learn something like that or if you steal a lick, steal it and then apply those three different things that, that we talked about today. That's really how you yeah. can make it your own. Um, so that's what I, I mean, that's what I do. Uh, if ever I'm feeling guilty playing licks that I stole from like Josh Smith or something like, which I, I steal so many of his licks, like, sorry, Josh. Like I, 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 I've even told them that I'm like, I've been bogarting your licks for like 10 years, <laughs> but, but you know, I, I literally was feeling guilty. Cause like there'd be times I'd go to a jam and I'm literally, I'm like, I'm just playing Josh Smith stuff. And like, I'm, I'm, I, it, it is a tribute to him because he's a huge influence on me. But at the same time, I don't think that's what he'd want me to do for my own sake hmm. to just not be who I am. So it's like take almost like. But that's who you are. You're just someone who steals. I get... <laughs> you figured me out. <laughs> I didn't know. I was, 
hanging out with a thief. <laughs> no, I, I personally, I don't, I don't have any hangups on that. I think whatever, uh, you know, whatever entertains you as the player and makes you feel like you're doing a good job and that's like, true progresses you like play other people's stuff. Like, yeah, if well, you want to, yeah. you know, like there's, there's room in this world for anyone to do whatever they want you know like what's that internet picasso quote it's like the good artist borrows the gr or the the good artist borrows the great artist steals or yeah. something like that i'm paraphrasing but and, and that's true but but i think uh the good middle ground here for you know i may be a thief but i'm uh you know i'm a reasonable one uh <laughs> we can we can kind of meet in the middle and like you know take the 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 new thing that you learned from stealing that lick and then just apply it in your own way um and then when you make it yours, then it's actually yours. Yeah. Even though it's effectively, it came from a place where you stole it. <laughs> I think we're overthinking Maybe, this. I think we are. Yeah. I think we're, I'm sorry. All right. Sorry. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we'll end on that note. Right. Uh, check out the link down below for Guitar Mastery Method uh, and whatever else we throw down there. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to do some more stuff. Yeah. Here in this session, we're going to mess around with some slide guitar. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe we'll check out some pedals or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how much time we want to spend on this. Yeah, yeah. Bye, everybody.